Hi, this is Quinton, developer evangelist for salesforce.com. You've probably just watched the VM Force announcement and thinking this force.com and Java thing looks pretty cool. There's still a lot of details to be sorted out, but as a Java developer, you probably want to start getting yourself familiar with what the force.com platform is and what it has to offer. So I'm going to take a few minutes and walk you through the basics of the platform from a Java developer's perspective. The very first thing you'll need to do is sign up for a developer edition org. Think of an org as your development environment and application server combined. Once signed up, you'll be automatically provisioned an org in the cloud, all without the need to install an app server, configure, class pass, etc. Everything is provided for you in the cloud. To sign up, click developer logon and follow the prompts. Alright, you're now logged into your org. A Salesforce org comes pre-configured with a number of standard applications such as sales support, uh, marketing, etc. All of these are accessible by the apps menu that I'm looking at now. But we're going to focus on creating something custom. After all, we're developers. Custom applications with inside force.com use an MVC pattern that you should already be familiar with if you've done any work in Java frameworks such as Spring. Force.com uses an object oriented data model. Let's go under Create Objects, Create a New Custom Object. I'm going to call it Book. Plural of book is books. Let's give it a record name. So this name is kind of a visual identifier for you. Behind the scenes, a, a unique ID will also be generated. So let's call it um, ISBN. And we're going to say it's an auto number, so an automatically incrementing field. And what we're going to do is give it a format, ISBN. and it's going to start at 1. Now what we can also do is create a custom tab or the view of our object via the, the interface here. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to use my object book that we just created. I'm going to give it a pretty simple tab style. Let's give it a chalkboard or even better books. Let's click. There you go. You can see up the top here we have a books tab that's automatically been added. Now what you'll see once we've created our object that a number of standard fields have already been created for us. Here's our ISBN number that we entered before and also a number of lookups. And these lookups are relationship fields so it's looking up the object so who creates it will automatically be a lookup to a user object. Now we're going to add just a couple of custom fields as well. So let's click new. Let's start with something simple. Create text. And we're going to call this the book title. Length has to be 100. And in our instance, what we're doing is using a validation rule here to say it's always required to save. Now let's have a look and see what that looks like on the screen. So we click on our generated view. Let's create a new book. And you'll notice here on the left hand side that there is a red indicator. That's a validation rule. So if I tried to save this, this, the data services will automatically enforce the validation rules that we enabled before. So we have to enter a value. So, Quinton School Book. And we're going to give it 100 pages. And click Save. So there we go, we've saved our object. But in addition, what's happened, the database services lets you search on things. So I'm going to say I want to search on books, and I want to search for the ISBN number that I just created. There it is. I can click on it. In addition to the ability to create custom objects like we just did, the force.com platform also provides a number of database services, including the ability to access the data model however you need, programmatically, through the generated UI, web services, etc. So now we're cooking, but the cloud's not staying still, it's evolving. We're now talking about Cloud 2, the ability for location-aware devices, your mobile phones, touch screens, the ability for feeds and information to talk to you. The force.com platform has that one covered. So let's look at what we need to do to make our application socially aware or make it chatter-enabled. So we're going to go in, we're going to look at our book object, we're going to enable feed tracking on it, and we're going to say any changes to the title will result in a change. So let's hit save. Now let's go back to our book object. 
We looked at a book we created earlier. Now all of a sudden, we are ready for cloud two. Share. Now my feed is telling information about this object. But we don't end there. We want to make it accessible via devices such as mobile phones. So let's go and create a mobile configuration. See how quickly and easy it is to do on the platform. Let's click on mobile configurations. Click on our configuration for our book. And all we need to do is add a data set. Let's go and create a new data set with our book record. And this tells our mobile configuration to push book data to the mobile devices that are set up. So now, Cloud2, check. Good to go. Over the past few minutes, we just touched on the abilities of the Force.com platform, and everything demoed within the short video was conducted via the browser. As many Java developers currently use Eclipse, developing on the Force.com platform can also be done via Force.com IDE, which is an Eclipse plugin that integrates seamlessly into your existing development processes such as source control. With the VM Force announcement, Java developers now have a really powerful path to the cloud. Over the next few months, more details about how VM Force apps will be able to leverage the Force.com platform will be announced. This brief intro was intended just to give Java developers a quick start to understanding what the platform has to offer. Make sure you stay tuned for more details and thanks for watching.